evening and welcome to News at 10, coming to you live from the studios of TV3 and also streaming live on our website, 3news.com. This evening, we have local and international stories for you. And also, if you go to our Facebook page, you can watch us there as well. Let's go straight to our major headlines we have for you tonight. The head of virology at the Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research, Professor William Ampofo, has disclosed that all backlogs of samples have been cleared as of Tuesday, May 5. At a news conference in Accra, he further revealed that the Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research is left with 1,982 to clear. Also in the bulletin, Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Patrick Kuma Abwaje, has expressed worry that the virus pandemic is affecting other aspects of healthcare delivery. At a news conference in Accra, he disclosed that antenatal attendance has seen a decline, which connotes people are not visiting hospitals for fear of contracting the coronavirus. Now, the Supreme Court has unanimously dismissed a suit filed by the Executive Director of the Africa Center for Security and Counterterrorism, Emmanuel Kuting, who challenged government's decision to sign the United States Ghana Military Cooperation Agreement. According to the seven member panel, reasons for the decision will be ready on May 20. As we have for you by way of headlines in other local fronts. Let's find out what's happening elsewhere around the world. And we're going straight uh, to the international front to give you the headlines that uh, is out there. More than 3 billion people will be living in places uh, with near unlivable temperatures of, by 2070. That's according to a new study. Unless greenhouse gas emissions fall, large numbers of people will experience average temperatures hotter than 29 degrees Celsius. This is according, uh, this uh, is considered outside the climate a niche in which humans have thrived for the past 6,000 years. The United Kingdom has overtaken Italy to report the highest official death toll from the new coronavirus in Europe. Figures released on Tuesday from Britain's office for national statistics reveal that more than 7,000 deaths in England and Wales in the week to April 24, raising the total death in the UK to 32,313. Thank you for staying with us. Let's go straight to the details of our stories now. And the Supreme Court has unanimously dismissed a suit filed by the Executive Director of the Africa Center for Security and Counterterrorism, Emmanuel Kuting, who challenged government's decision to sign the United States Ghana Military Cooperation Agreement. According to the seven member panel, reasons for the decision will be made available on May 20. In 2018, the executive director of the African Center for Security and Counterterrorism, Emmanuel Cotton, and the Ashanti Regional Youth Organizer of the NDC, Broja Jemfi, filed separate suits at the Supreme Court against the government challenging the legality of United States of America Defense Cooperation Agreement with Ghana. Emmanuel Cotton wanted the Supreme Court to declare the agreement which many Ghanaians, including some security experts, criticized as null and void. He challenged the basis on which Ghana's parliament ratified the agreement, which he argued was not executed between Ghana government and the U.S. government. Yabru Jajinfi of the NDC also filed a suit praying the court, among other things, set aside the agreement on the grounds that it was not in the national interest of Ghana and contravenes the 1992 constitution. Bruja Jemfi was also asking for a declaration that the word ratify used within the provisions of Article 75 of the 1992 Constitution is a term of art which has a true meaning of incorporating international law and treaties into the domestic legal system of the Republic of Ghana and not prior approval or approval. 
He further sought a declaration that the ratification by Parliament of the supposed agreement between Ghana and the Government of United States of America on defense cooperation, the status of United States forces, and access to and use of agreed facilities and areas in the Republic of Ghana on March 24, 2018, when the supposed agreement had not been executed by the President or person authorized by the President as provided for by Article 75 of the 1992 Constitution is contrary to the said Article 75 of the 1992 Constitution and same is null and void. The defendants in the matter were the Attorney General and Minister of Justice Gloria Kofu and the Minister of Defense Dominic Nitiwo. Following the ratification of the agreement, U.S. troops had the opportunity, among other things, be exempted from paying taxes on equipment that is brought to Ghana as well as use Ghana's radio spectrum for free. And let's go to Skype now. Let's go to Skype now and speak uh, to Broja Jemfi. He's joined us to uh, help us understand what he makes of the Supreme Court's decision. Good evening, Mr. Jemfi, and thank you for joining us uh, via Skype. To start with, we know that the full details of the ruling will be out on May 20, but what are your preliminary comments on the ruling? Well, good evening, and good evening to your viewers. I must say that I was very disappointed sitting in court today and uh, hearing what was said by the president of, of the court. I was expecting that um, some of the reliefs, if not all, would have been upheld uh, in the interest of a country and the arguments that uh, my lawyers made. But unfortunately, the court decided that the case should be dismissed because according to the president of the court, uh, it lacked you know, merit. So as you said, we are all waiting for uh, the reasoning behind the, 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 the final judgment. And from the, um, the, the commentary that was passed by the judges in court, were you able to find reason in, uh, in the, the argument they make that your, your case lacked merit and that the government of Ghana and the uh, defendants in the case had done considerable uh, homework before assigning to the agreement? You know, it's very difficult to uh, agree because we don't know the, the reasoning behind it. Um, you know, basically, what I had gone to the Supreme Court to do was to ask for interpretation into Article 75.1, right. which states that if a president you know, has the right to enter into treaties and agreements with other uh, countries, and when that treaty or agreement is entered into, the Constitution uses the word execute mm -hmm. before it is sent to Parliament for ratification. What does the execution mean. That's what I wanted the Supreme Court to be clear. Because from my understanding and the understanding of my lawyers, it is that there must be some signed agreement between you know, the two countries before it is sent to parliament for ratification, right. which was not done. Because the agreement as sent to parliament was unsigned and so we took the position that Article 75.1 was not uh, adhered to. Right. Now, there's a, there are other two issues. The issue with even the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court itself, because okay. the agreement, as we have read, uh, says that if any dispute you know, arises out of the agreement, mm -hmm. not even the Supreme Court of Ghana has jurisdictional powers over it. And we thought that that you know, sought to oust the jurisdictional powers and authority of the Supreme Court. And, and, and so, we wanted so, so what, what, then is, what then is the next line of action for you, Mr. Genvi? I think that we all need to wait for and the judgment. You know, read the judgment. Because right. without reading the judgment, we may be uh, wrong in coming to a conclusion. Mm. You, you may not know what actually accounted 
for the final decision. Uh, maybe it was a technical, maybe it was a technical, you know, decision. Uh, uh, decision. Okay. And know that this was synonymous. So we need to listen to individual judges on the panel and mm. why they all came to uh, that conclusion. That will inform us whether we should go back to the same court for a review. Or, you know, it's also going to guide us going forward. Because going forward, yes. We would have other government also enter into and, and, and all of and that. And other agreements. Thank you so much for making time to speak with us this evening, uh, Broja Jemfi, uh, member of the NDC, and also he is the... Uh, the applicant uh, in the case between that um, uh, agreement signed between the government of Ghana and that of the United States. So we'll see how it unfolds. We all wait for the judgment which uh, will be made available on the 20th of May. This is still uh, News at 10 on TV3. We stay in the courts because a seven-member panel of the Supreme Court presided over by Justice um, in Chief Justice Enin Yebo has unanimously dismissed the suit filed against the Finance Minister Ken Ferreira. Uh, on the issuance of a 2.25 billion bond. The court dismissed the suit on the grounds that it lacked merit. Dynamic Youth Movement of Ghana, Diamog, dragged the Finance Minister, Shraj, mm. and the Attorney General to the Supreme Court over Shraj's investigations into the $2.25 billion bond issuance in March 2017. The movement demanded an interpretation of Articles 284, 286, and six other reliefs. A declaration that by going beyond investigations to make a pronouncement of guilt or otherwise on the first defendant in respect of the allegation of breach of conflict of interest, the second defendant has contravened Article 287 of the 1992 Constitution. The movement also sought a declaration that by interpreting Article 284 of the 1992 Constitution as disclosed between paragraph 3 of page 127 and paragraph 3 of page 133 of Shraj's report, the second defendant contravened Article 1301A of the 1992 Constitution. A consequential order that the content of the report as specified in the reliefs be expunged from the report. Diamog also asks a declaration that the failure of the first defendant to declare his shareholding interest in Data Bank Financial Services Limited, Data Bank Brokerage Limited, and Data Bank Financial Holdings Limited to the Auditor General before taking office as Minister of Finance, as found by the second defendant on page 120 of the report, contravenes Article 2861A of the 1992 Constitution. They sought further declaration that the occupation by the first defendant of the office of a director in Ventures and Acquisition Limited, a private company, while in office as the minister responsible for finance without the due permission of the right Honorable Speaker of Parliament on the grounds stated by the law, contravenes Article 783 of the 1992 Constitution. The seven-member panel said the reasons for the court will be filed at the registry of the court for easy access to the public. This is still the uh, news coming to you from our studio here at Adisawe in Accra. We'll be back shortly with some more stories. All right, thank you very much for staying with TV3. This is still news at 10. We move on to some other stories uh, staying on issues relating to health. The Ghana Health Service has said that the country has reached its peak in terms of COVID-19 infections. The Director of Public Health of the Service, Dr. Bedusa Kodia, who spoke at a media briefing earlier today, said that the number of cases will start declining depending on how well citizens abide by the preventive protocols. Of the 1,030, in a short time, we had 115 of them. Those inquiring at um, Accra here and also in Tamale. So we realized that with a sharp rise, and now, with the cases that we are testing, clearly we seem as a country to be on top of the peak. And we are at a stage to decline. That is the observation now. The declination will depend on how we adhere to the various preventive etiquettes that have been enumerated. We are not off the hook yet. But then if we continue the way we are doing now, by adhering to the various social distancing, adhering to the various individual preventive measures, wearing of masks, keeping away a distance from us, hand washing, cough etiquette, 
other respiratory efforts. These are the things when we do intensively will let us come down from where we are. So respond directly to the question where you are, you are the peak of the curve yet to come down. But then the only thing to make us come down by strict adherence to the various preventive etiquettes. Uh, let's uh, interrogate this subject matter a while longer. We've been joined by Skype by Sebastian Arthur. He's a virologist. Good evening, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good evening. Per the data that we have and your, you know, your monitoring of um, the contact tracing, the testing, and all the numbers, would you agree with the Ghana Health Service that we've hit our peak and pro hopefully in the, in, the, in the next few days we'll start declining? Yeah, um, I think it's very tricky to actually go with the, um, the director for public health or not. Because to me, I feel like we can still do better in terms of the testing. We've done very well. I mean, um, we are one of the, the, the um, countries that have really tested a lot of people. But if we can test some more, we'll realize that, to me, I'm not convinced that the number we have is the peak. I'm not convinced. That's what I will say. Mm. Um, maybe they have some calculations they've done based on the testing they've done, and um, they might be having something we don't really know, mm. which is making them conclude that we are the peak. But to me, I think there are some more testing that we can do. And if we do those testing and we see that the numbers are not increasing, then we can say we are the peak. Let me just briefly say that when we say we are the peak, we are actually trying to say that the numbers we are getting are not more than what we've previously gotten. So it, we, it's more like a curve that you get to the top, and then now you... you it flattens for some time you, before you it starts to It doesn't come down. You'll be having some slight bump here. Okay. Yes, so it will just plateau a little bit, and then it will be... So the plateauing is where we will say that, okay, we are at our peak. Mm -hmm. To me, if we do some more tests, and we see that the numbers we are getting is not increasing, then we can conclude that we are at the peak. But are we winning this fight um, that government consistently saying that they are doing the chasing and because we are chasing, we are finding the people and testing them. And based on that analogy, would you say that we are really winning the fight and that give or say in two months, we can confidently say now we have a grab of the issue? Yeah, um, looking at the statistics, uh, to, I wouldn't say we are winning, but I would say we are doing very well because... Okay. Um, uh, we, we, we are um, at, right now, I think, more than 100,000 tests. And looking at the number of cases we have, from uh, positive cases we have, uh, to me, I think it's, it's a very good thing we are doing. Uh, our numbers are not too high. Mm. And uh, trust me, we'll be, we may have people in the system who have not been tested yet, and they are still uh, carriers of the virus. Mm. But based on numbers, based on statistics, based on what we've done so far. To me, we have done well, and we are doing very well. I think there is more room for improvement for as improvement. well. Uh, and uh, in conclusion, let's talk about Accra, which has over 80% of the total number of cases recorded. What are we doing wrong in Accra? Or you think it is pretty much okay, looking at the numbers we have in Accra, is because we are, yes, again, aggressively chasing and testing the people. That is why we have the conditions, of, uh, the, the situation that we have in Accra. Yeah, you are right on point, the, the word you mentioned. So, I mean, the phrase, we are um, aggressively testing. That is exactly what you find. Now, remember, Accra is definitely going to be the hotspot because this is where anyone who travels outside of the country comes in to settle before they move to wherever they want to go. Right. By the time they realize that they are infected, people in Accra will be the people to have it first mm. before it spread outward. So it is normal to have Accra with the numbers we have. And just imagine that we are not doing the aggressive testing. I'm not sure we're going to hit even 500. Or, I mean, we're not going to hit 1,000 cases right. in Accra. So what we are doing is the reason why we are seeing what we are seeing. It's mm. not really alarming at all to me. I think it's it's just what it is. Because the case started before we did the, long, uh, the, the closure of border. Mm. So yes, what we are seeing should be normal to us. But it doesn't mean we should be comfortable. Okay. Thank you so much for making time to speak with us. Sebastian uh, Arthur is a virologist.
Um, this is still News at 10 on TV3. Just before we bounce out, let's go to the presidency. President Akufuado has revealed that uh, government will soon raise some 3 billion Ghana cities to support sectors of the economy, including hospitality and tourism industry. The president was interacting with players in the hospitality and tourism sector at the Jubilee House. The coronavirus pandemic has affected all sectors of the Ghanaian economy, with the hospitality and tourism industry the most affected. The meeting at the instance of the president was to find ways at reducing and mitigating the impact of the coronavirus on the hospitality and tourism sector. President Akufuado assured them the government has rolled out several interventions to cushion the economy. Apart from this 600 uh, million fund for SMEs. There are also two other sources of money that are being specifically directed at you, at you, I mean, amongst others, but you are an important part of it. The commercial banks have agreed with the Minister of Finance and the Bank of Ghana to raise some three billion CDs uh, by way of loans that they're going to give specific industries. The hospitality sector is one of them. And the Bank of Ghana, again with the support of the Minister of Finance, has uh, worked towards reducing interest rates and even putting in place a moratorium on the payment of principal and I believe of interest on monies Bella Ayei Ahu is the president of the Ghana Tourism Federation. Beyond the COVID, what we are thinking and planning is that domestic tourism should come alive. And our humble request will be that you declare the domestic tourism for us and we can assure you that we will drive it. Participants of the meeting were made up of the leadership of the Ghana Tourism Federation, the Tour Operators Association of Ghana, and the Hoteliers Association of Ghana. And that's how we bring the bulletin to a close. Thank you very much for watching. There is more news on our website, 3news.com. I am Martin Asiedu Do Have a good evening. As always, stay positive.